Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people. Where in today's episode, a Karen tries to steal a bionic arm from somebody. Guys, as always, the stories in this episode are crazy, so strap yourselves in, warm up those necks, and do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Oh, and the email link's gonna be posted if you guys wanna submit stories and Reddit posts and all that good stuff. Guys, we're diving in. Okay, so my wife and I have been married for 18 years. We have a 16-year-old daughter together who's been dating a slightly shy and awkward young man for around three to four months now. Now, the guy seems very nervous around my daughter, and he's admitted in passing to my wife that he can't believe she agreed to date him, and that he thinks that she's way out of his league. He does seem very respectful. He's just really shy. My wife is usually an independent and awesome woman, and her ideals align closely with mine, particularly in terms of feminism and equality. We both strive to raise our daughter to be as independent and as capable as possible. So since my daughter's been dating this kid, my wife has changed considerably, and she's given our daughter advice that's left me with raised eyebrows more than once. Some of the advice I've heard my wife give is, oh, it's cute for boys to pay for everything, especially in your first relationship. Or, oh honey, don't worry about that. He can pay for you. If he really liked you, he would. And other similar things. Now, I've tried to balance this out by telling my daughter straight away that two people in a partnership should be contributing equally. And my personal favorite, if someone asked if they can take you out to dinner, it's reasonable to expect them to pay. But if someone asked you to grab dinner with them, it's reasonable to split the payment. Now, I figured that would be an easy way for a young person to understand the difference. However, I've noticed my daughter becoming more and more entitled with her boyfriend's money. They haven't been anywhere, obviously, since we're home, but the way she talks about him saying, oh, I'll just ask him to pay for so-and-so, etc., leaves a pretty bad taste in my mouth. She's also flippantly bragged and mentioned that she gets him to buy gift cards for her, etc., by mentioning her mother's advice, saying, if you really liked me, you'd pay for so-and-so. Now, I've spoken to my wife privately and told her my concerns, but she insists that it's a rite of passage for girls, and it's cute that she should feel a guy is completely spoiling her. I told her that it's not cute for her to be thinking that it's acceptable to view relationships as personal ATMs, and my wife has become very angry with me, and now she's calling me an a-hole, with a lot of hostility. So, am I. Guys, I personally believe that OP is not the a-hole in this situation. Like, he's trying to raise their daughter to not be an entitled, spoiled brat and a potential gold digger. And mom is clearly trying to mess that up by making her daughter think that it's cute when she has that poor boy wrapped around her finger and she can get whatever she wants from him. So this person says, I've always paid my own way on dates because I was not for sale. Because if I kissed him, I want both of us to know that it's because I wanted to, not because he paid for it with dinners or tickets to a show. I wanted friendship and love, not dependence and manipulation and stupid games. What your wife is encouraging in your daughter is not cute. It's ugly and potentially dangerous. I'm a professional nanny, and I use Care.com to find jobs. I found a lot of wonderful, well-paying positions through the site, and this is the first I've encountered, and I knew I just had to share. So I had a woman message me about watching her four kids, ages 9, 5, 2, and 2 months old, for 50 hours a week. The pay is $350 a month. Now, normal pay in my area for a nanny starts at $12 an hour for one kid, and then increases between $250 to $5 per each additional child. Caregivers have a profile where you can specify your hourly rates and things like that, so she already knew my qualifications and all that before messaging me. So her message reads, Hi there, I'm looking for someone with a good heart to watch my four kids from 5.30am to 3.30pm Monday to Friday. It also needs to be in your home, and you will need to provide three meals daily and three real meals, not just peanut butter and jelly. My kids also only drink apple juice and Dr. Pepper, which you will also need to provide. You also need to be CPR and first aid certified as well. My two-year-old and two-month-old need diapers changed, and my five-year-old needs help wiping, otherwise he won't do it good enough. My nine-year-old is autistic, so you will need to be patient with him. They also need to go to the park once a day and have arts and crafts as well. If you have your own children in the house, the pay is going to be lower. Absolutely no animals either, unless you keep them outside when my children are there. I pay $350 a month. No exceptions. You'll just be watching kids. It's not that hard to do, so I won't be paying a ridiculous amount for someone to sit there all day. I'm a single mom, so don't ask for more. 
Now, needless to say, I didn't respond to that, and then she sends me another message saying, I know you saw my message, and I just want to let you know that you are a real C-word for not helping out a single mom who has an autistic child. My kids need to be watched, and I can't afford to put them in daycare or pay ridiculous amounts for some idiot to sit there on their phone all day. I will be reporting you for your attitude and being racist against my autistic son. So after I got the second message, I quickly reported her to Care.com so they could review and handle as they see fit. I also blocked her, so I can't see her profile anymore. Good riddance, and talk about entitled guys. I'm a single mom, so you need to watch my four kids, and I'll pay you like a dollar an hour, not a penny more, because you'd be on your phone all day. $350 a month for 50 hours a week of work. And let me tell you, watching kids is work. Like, watching a 9-year-old is okay, because they're kind of independent, but a 5, a 2, and a 2-month-old, they pretty much require constant attention. I wonder if anybody ever took her up on that silly offer. Okay, so this post is not about me, but rather my good friend. We've been friends since I moved a few years ago, and I have to admit that one of my main motivations for becoming his friend in the beginning was because of his sick robotic arm. Now, my friend was born with both arms, but he had to get his right arm amputated after he got a life-threatening infection. So he's had this arm for maybe four to five years. Now, it started off as a simple exoskeleton arm with robotic joints. And over the years, his parents paid a lot more money to make the arm better. It now looks more like a real arm, with the exception of it being purple. The guy can basically do anything now. He can throw, he can catch things, he can use a gaming controller, type, etc. So this story happened about two years ago. My friend and I were on our 8th grade school trip to King's Dominion, a popular amusement park where we lived. We were allowed to go wherever we wanted with minimal supervision, so long as we checked in at a set location every two hours. My friend and I had just gotten back from riding a popular ride with a half hour wait time, and decided to get a funnel cake to split. We got our food and sat down at one of the empty tables. We were digging in when we saw the stars of the show, a mom, Karen, and her innocent little boy, who's maybe 5 or 6 years old, and they sat down next to us. The kid was about to eat a sundae that mom bought for him, when he noticed my friend's arm. Now, my friend had never tried to hide his arm. He thought it was awesome, as I thought it was. So the boy, being the totally innocent kid he was, just stared at my friend's arm for about a minute. My friend saw the kid and just smiled, lifting his hand to make the arm wave at him. The kid then squealed in delight, which prompted his mom to look up. She seemed surprised, and she began asking a lot of questions. A lot of personal questions. The mom asked, Hey, so, uh, what happened to your arm? My friend told her that he had to have it amputated due to a life-threatening infection. She says, Oh, that sounds terrible, are you alright? My friend says he's fine, as he's gotten used to it, and the mom says, Can I get a closer look at it? My friend shrugs and says sure. He then walks to their table and sat down between the mom and the kid, laying his arm on the table so they could take a look at it. The kid then asked, Can I touch it? My friend said, I'd prefer if you didn't, it's very expensive. So the mom then comes in and says, Oh, come on, he just wants to touch it. It's not like he's gonna break it or anything. Now, at this point, I can see that my friend is looking really uncomfortable, and he hesitates and says, Okay. The kid then taps on my friend's arm a few times. He then points to a small switch close to the stump of his shoulder and asks, Hey, what does that do? My friend says, Oh, please don't touch that. That'll detach my arm. The kid then asks what detach means, and my friend explains that it means that my arm's gonna come off. The kid looks frightened, but my friend quickly assures him that it wouldn't hurt. During the whole conversation, the mom is just looking from him to his arm and then back to him. Every once in a while, she would look over her shoulder as if she was considering stealing it. The kid recovers from his shock and continues to ask questions. He then asked, Do you think you can take it off so I can wear it? At that, my friend laughs and says, Oh, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to wear it. You have both of your arms. Now, I want to note that the kid does look disappointed, but he doesn't throw a fit or push further. The mom, however, looks like she wants to throw my friend over the bridge we were sitting by. My friend tells her, I'm sorry ma'am, this arm is really expensive. It costs about $10,000. I just can't risk damaging it. He can keep touching my arm if he wants to, though. The mom then says, Please, that arm's not $10,000, right? Looking at me. Just take it off and let my son hold it. To that, my friend says no, and the kid seems to want to go, saying, Mommy, can we just go on this ride? She then says, One minute, honey. But mom, he doesn't want me to play with it anymore. 
At this point, she grabs my friend's arm, trying to freaking pull it off, and my friend screams that it hurts and for her to let it go. All the while, her son is telling her to stop. I then screamed at her to stop pulling, but the mom just pulls harder at this point. She must have somehow flipped the switch that releases the clamps, because my friend's arm came flying off, crashing with a loud whack. My friend immediately runs over it and checks for damages. Of course at this point, the mom grabs her son and they began quickly walking away, but I saw a security guard behind her and quickly informed him what happened. The security guard catches up to her and she tries swatting him away, but he stood in front of her and called more guards over. They then escorted her and her son from the park, and we never saw either of them again. My friend was extremely upset, as the wrist of the arm had slammed into the railing, which severed most of the wires connecting the wrist to the forearm. Many of the circuits and other parts were destroyed. He then called his mom and she took both of us home early. We told her about what happened, and she said she would try to find out how much repairs would be. The repairs turned out to be $2,000, and his parents couldn't afford the repairs, so they set up a GoFundMe page. Within a week, he had received the money for repairs. I feel so bad for OP's friend to have to go through that. At that point, I honestly would have just turned around and ran out of there before she even got to the point of grabbing onto the arm. Okay, I do have one question though. Why the heck didn't security hold the woman so OP's friend can look at getting some justice? Because she clearly assaulted him. Do you guys ever listen to these stories and wonder where the heck are the bystanders? Like if I saw a psycho Karen trying to rip someone's prosthetic arm off, I think I'd have to get involved. This story happened an hour ago, and I'm still laughing at the insanity and absurdity of the situation. So some backstory. My nan and I are close, and she's the fifth member of our family. She's elderly, disabled, and asthmatic, so she's high risk, and very vulnerable. Now, I'm also severely asthmatic, and I probably shouldn't be going out shopping for her, but for my nan, I'm willing to risk it. So I go out to do her shopping at Morrison's. She gives me her shopping list, and I get what she needs and what's available. So like at most stores, there's markings to help with social distancing and whatnot. So this Karen starts off by ramming me with her cart while I was waiting to scan my items and pay. I begin placing my items on the till, and she's just glaring at me for some reason, and muttering to herself about me hurrying up. I then place the divider and go start to bag my items. So as I'm bagging my items, I notice the cashier continues scanning strange items that I know I wasn't buying. So I say to the cashier, Oh, those aren't mine. And the cashier is confused, saying there's no divider. I look up, and this woman has removed the divider, and now her items were being scanned and added to my bill. I told the cashier, and she starts to remove the items and sort the mistake out. And this is when the Karen goes insane. She says, Excuse me, what are you doing? Now I'm confused, and I tell her that her items were accidentally being scanned onto my transaction and say that the divider must have been buried in the items, and I didn't think it was a big deal, as the cashier was apologetic and sorted it. She then says, You need to pay for my stuff. Now I'm just shocked and say, What? She then glares at me saying, My items were being scanned on your transaction, so you have to pay for them. And since you're paying for some now, you might as well help me pay for all of my items. I give the cashier a look, and I'm absolutely gobsmacked and said, What makes you think I'm gonna pay for your stuff? She then scoffs, and continues on about how a few mistakes means that I have to pay. I then pay for my items, and she's still standing there expectantly waiting for me to pay for her shopping. I begin to walk away, and she screams for me to come back. People are now starting to stare, so I turn and say, Lady, I don't know you, and I don't have to pay for your stuff for any reason. She then screams for security and feeds them some lie about me having to pay for her shopping. He then calls me over to ask what's happening, and I told him. She then went on admitting that she removed the divider, thinking I wouldn't notice, and I'd pay for her stuff. Of course, the security guard just looked at her and told her the same thing I said, and said I didn't have to. As I began walking away, she screamed at the cashier saying she didn't have any cash or cards on her to pay, and was demanding her to honor some expired coupons. I left before anything else, so I don't know how it ended. Guys, how did this woman think that was gonna work? Seriously. Just putting your items down with no form of payment, expecting others to pay for you. I wonder how many times she's tried this and if it actually works. I have two kids that absolutely love hanging out with kids of every age in our area, so needless to say, I've always had a yard full of children on any given day. Now, I never mind that though, as I would rather have them outside playing instead of inside on their video games. Since this is an every single day thing, I always make sure to have water bottles and snacks for kids that show up since I don't want my kids to eat or drink in front of other kids without having stuff to share with their friends. 
this is where it all starts. So yesterday, I was outside painting a nightstand on my driveway while a group of 10 kids were playing in my yard. I then hear a car speeding around the corner and turn around to see a car slam on their brakes directly in front of my house. Now I assume this was a hostile person, upset about something, so I tell the kids to go to the backyard while I figure out what this person's problem is. As I get to the end of the driveway, I see this lady telling her kid, who's probably 5 or 6 years old, to get out and go play. Now I stand there confused, as I've never seen this child before, so I walk to her passenger door and here's the conversation. I say, Hi, uh, I think you have the wrong address. Psycho Karen says, No I don't. I'll be back around 8 or 9 to get her. I do want to note that it's 4pm right now. To that I say, Um, yeah, that's cool, but I don't think the small child should be left alone for that long. She says, Alone? You'll be watching her. I told her I won't be watching anyone, so again, wrong house. She says, You have all the neighborhood kids here, so you can add another one. She also hasn't eaten yet, so she needs lunch and dinner. I tell her, I have my friend's kids here, I'm not watching them. They're here by choice with their parents' permission. I also don't feed any child until I've spoken directly to their parents, and make sure I know of any allergies. And also, it's snacks. I don't cook meals for anybody. So at this point, she attempts to drive off. So I yell, if you leave her here, you can pick her up from the police station. Now this comment doesn't sit well with her. She then throws her car in park and gets out and gets in my face. She says, are you threatening me? I can say you kidnapped her and have you thrown in jail. I then point to the security cameras on my home and said, please do, I would love that. Now at this point, she lifts her hand in an attempt to hit me. Now that didn't happen, as she looked down and seen that I was open carrying. When she sees my weapon, she quickly yells for her kid to get in and gets in her car. She then throws it in reverse and flies into my driveway, probably in an attempt to scare me, which didn't. Coming within inches of hitting me, and in the process, runs over the nightstand that I was painting and breaking it while damaging her own car. She then shouts at me, You will be getting a bill from my lawyer for damaging my car. Again, I point out my security cameras. When she leaves, I call the police. I then turn over all the footage to the police and send copies to the parents to cover myself in case this parent tried to accuse me of things that weren't true. The police have since reached out, saying that they had located the woman because she in fact tried to file a police report saying that I held her at gunpoint and tried to kidnap her daughter. Apparently she thought my cameras were just for show. Now, she unfortunately waited a bit too long to file the fake report, since I had a... Since I had already made a report and turned over the footage to the police by the time she called, she got in trouble for making a false police report, and again when her insurance company reached out to me for my insurance info, since she claimed my car hit hers. She does live in my area, so I'm sure this won't be the last time I see this parent or child. I do feel bad for the kid though. She was looking so horrified the entire time this was going on, and if the parent had simply asked if her daughter could play at my house, I would have said yes, and then got the parent's phone number, and everything would have been fine. Some people should really not have kids. Like, who in the world would even want to leave their child with a complete stranger? A bad parent, that's who. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, we survived another one. If you enjoyed the stories today, do remember to hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. A Karen accidentally donates to charity, so she calls the police and wants everyone arrested. Check it out if you haven't, and myself and Steva will see you guys in the next one. We love you.